Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 28. Today is February 20 and happy Thursday to you all. Welcome to the new members and the ones that are going to be listening to us later uh, today. Please remember that this call is being recorded and it's going to be available in our Horizon podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Please remember to ask your questions so we can have a good uh, Q&A session at the end and you can direct any question to uh, any member of the team you would like. So let's start with the updates from the engineering department. I will pass the word now to Luca. Thank you, Angie. Hi, everybody. Luca here and uh, thank you for following today's Weekly Insider as usual. So first of all, a great shout out to Treto, Ghost and a few other community members that contributed the testing, uh, what uh, we call we call the, the intermediate release of Sphere by Horizon during last weekend. They did a, really an awesome job, in particular Toretto, because uh, he produced a full analysis and related report, which I shared already with uh, Gustavo, that contained a very big amount of feedbacks and everything was super well detailed. So really great job, Toretto. It's great to have you in the community. In general, the feedbacks were, were all good. Uh, we got amazing, uh, positive uh, uh, feedback from, uh, from everybody. So we proceeded by integrating the uh, Sphere by Horizon application with the new Zendy software, version 2020, as uh, scheduled. Uh, we were able to publish uh, yesterday. Uh, so now that is live and you all can install it and run it. Earlier today, I was checking if there were additional feedbacks from uh, the community. And again, I only read po uh, very positive comments. That's also a very good indication that the latest modifications we brought to Sphere by Ryzen were exactly what the community was asking for. So that is really great. Speaking about the new deprecation, not only Sphere by Ryzen is ready for download, but also Swing. And we're running the third round of notifications uh, later today, which means that uh, once again, we are telling all our partners and exchanges that there is a new uh, mandatory version to be downloaded and we will uh, run a fourth round on Monday just for those partners that maybe are um, late uh, to update. Uh, Monday is the day before deprecation. Just to remind everybody, the deprecation is going to happen on the February 25th, 8.30 p.m. GMT time. Of course, this is just an estimation. Apart from deprecation, we also continued working on all the other open fronts. This week, we performed already um, many code review sessions, especially on uh, components related to the sidechain SDK consensus part. Development activities on the other fronts continue as well. So to name a few, uh, the additional sidechain SDK changes, changes to mention for backward transfer support, and the work on the Explorer. That's it for now from engineering. See you later if there will be any tech question at the end. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Now let's continue with Alan for, uh, for some updates on the node side. Thanks, Angie. Just have a quick update about the earning period for secure and super nodes. Uh, the last week we had to adjust the earning period one time. What we usually do is try to keep this on a current uh, calendar day based on 1 a.m. UTC and the hash power went up which reduced the block times which shortened it to prior to the prior day so we made a one-time adjustment of adding about uh, 24 blocks last Friday got it back on track and we're now um, had that one-time update and currently we're, we're back on about a 1 a.m. UTC uh, time frame for the earning periods. That's about it on the secure and super notes. Thank you, Alan. Now let's continue with the Spencer for some updates regarding help desk. Happy Thursday, everyone. Uh, everyone has a cup of coffee that needs one, I presume. On the help desk, uh, a typical help desk week, uh, as usual, our tickets were dominated by tickets supporting users of the faucet. 
Uh, the metrics are published in the text channel, and uh, our user satisfaction has improved over the last seven days to 4.3 out of a rating scale of 5 with 23 user reviews. That's it from the user desk. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo uh, for UX updates. Hey, everyone. Good evening. So going back to support, I want to give a shout out to Psyrex for his continued Discord support. He's been doing an amazing job on that front. So from all the team, thank you, Psyrex, for all the effort. So on the faucet, uh, on the upcoming days, we are going live uh, with uh, additional register and login options. So we are going live now with uh, Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, next week, we might go also live uh, with WeChat for our Chinese community. Oh, still on the faucet, we are working also on the admin dashboard, making several improvements there. And uh, another project that we are working, we are creating about uh, using WhatsApp business accounts for later integrate with our website. That So that's another project we are working and we also resume development on HD. And that's all on our side. Thank you, Gustavo. Now let's um, have Rowan for the BD updates. Welcome back, Rowan. Thank you, Angie. I think it'd be very, very unfair for me to provide any real update just now. So instead, I'd like to hand it over to Vano. And Vano can provide a bit of an update as to what he's been doing while I've been away. And I believe he's also got an announcement to make at the same time. Wait, so Vano, wait, take it away. Hold on, Rowan. Rowan, you're saying you weren't working while you were out of office? I was obviously working, but very, very, very minimal work for the first time in years. Uh, so no, I don't have a huge amount of public information that I can share at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Rowan, and thank you. So we have a, a great update today. Uh, a very reputable exchange, uh, CoinEx, has decided to list Zen. And um, deposits are live as of today, February 20th. And trading will uh, open on February 26th. And withdrawals will open on March 10th. Uh, the trading pairs are uh, Zen BTC and Zen USDT. Uh, and they are also doing a launch promo for uh, our listing. Uh, I will uh, put the link of uh, promo in uh, our weekly insider channel for you to read through it and decide whether you wish to participate. And apart from that, uh, we have several concurrent AMA offers. And I think soon we will finish the organizing part and announce the dates for our community to join. Apart from that, obviously, we are pushing strong on PD front, but not always we have uh, the ability to do some public updates. So that's all from me. Welcome back, Rowan, and back to you, Angie. Thank you, Van and Rowan. Okay, now let's have Lucy for some marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, and a really exciting announcement. Uh, Horizon Academy now has its own account on Twitter. So Academy is a, a free educational platform for everything, blockchain, cryptocurrency, and online privacy uh, for everyone, uh, at, regardless of what level you are, uh, you are on. So we will be posting educational content and resources on Horizon Academy Twitter. So it's not limited to Horizon content only. Uh, we will also be uh, uh, sharing, uh, you know, uh, exciting events like, you know, giveaways and competitions because uh, in, the, in the future on that account. So please make, uh, make sure that you follow uh, 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 Horizon Academy on Twitter. So the handle is just at Horizon Academy. And then we still have a uh, a couple of active community giveaways uh, that you should join at least one of them. So one one is the uh, uh, giveaway for watching our YouTube videos, and then the second one is the fan art competition, which uh, which is ending next week. So make sure that you join and still have time to do so. Uh, we also have a couple of AMA events coming up soon, so please keep an eye on our social feed uh, for the announcement. Uh, and then our node hosting guide page received an update, which will include uh, a uh, an calculator to calculate and estimate, um, you know, how much that you will be. 
uh, you will be rewarded by hosting uh, either Secreno or uh, or Supernode, which provides uh, an easier tool uh, and then um, an easier way to understand uh, what it means to uh, to run a node uh, with Horizon. So if you don't see the change, the change should come in, uh, it should uh, it should come very very soon. And then we will also uh, be releasing updates on uh, several of our other web uh, web pages as well. Uh, so stay tuned. And that's it from me. Thank you. Pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Very well. Okay, awesome. So this week we sent out a newsletter to a whole bunch of people about the uh, the new white paper that was released. It's great to see that now we have more people open the newsletter than two years ago we had on our entire list. So uh, very exciting and interesting and uh, really powerful growth on our email front. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have added two new people to our node hosting community page, which is horizon.global backslash node dash hosting. So if you wanna have a third party host your node, uh, we have some good community discounts there. Uh, we'll be adding Pat Heyman uh, either this week or next week, as well as easy master nodes. I've been talking with uh, Tiago and uh, uh, he'll be on there soon as well. So we'll have four really great options for you and hopefully that will continue to grow. Um, as Gustavo mentioned, we're continuing to increase the number of ways you can use and log into the faucet. Um, and this week we had in one day the highest number of visitors to the faucet that we've had in our entire history. So we are on a great upwards trend and we're continuing to set records. Uh, but however, hopefully this is just a start and we'll continue to see this increasing over the next days, weeks, months, and years. That's it for me. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. Now let's welcome Rosario for some product and engineering updates. Hi, everyone. I'm not much of updates. I've been traveling and will be in the Milan office tomorrow. So I am uh, looking forward to working with our engineering team and planning uh, the the follow on steps for uh, app post beta. So I know that uh, our our team is focused on on delivering beta and and working on that. But uh, the focus of our visit here is, is to plan what our first site chain is going to be and just uh, continuing on with our roadmap. Thank you. Thank you, Rosario. And now let's have uh, Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie. Um, okay, so yes, I'm, I'm in Milan right now. Super happy to be here. And uh, Danielle, if you're listening to this, uh, you should know that I had lunch today without any carbs. So it is possible in Italy, uh, and it was fantastic. So really looking forward to being here. And, you know, I'll talk about those priorities for what, what's going on while I'm in town for the next month. Um, but let, let me uh, first talk about a couple of other things. So as Luca mentioned, we had some excellent feedback on uh, you know, preliminary users testing out the, the new Sphere updates. Uh, I love it. So I love the fact that now uh, our products are getting out there and we're getting you know phenomenal feedback. We're hearing terms like lightning fast, working perfectly. Uh, so guys, thank you from the community for actually helping testing uh, you know the wallet. And this is our our operating you know uh, the way we're going to be doing business going forward. So we had some big lessons learned here, and I would say um, the summary is that we for sure want decentralization and you know decentralization in engineering as well. Um, but there's one thing that we have right now that we do really well is we have a, a ridiculously good engineering team in-house. Uh, and sometimes when you outsource key products, uh, you, you don't find the same quality. So um, that's one lesson we learned is you know outsourcing and not having hands-on management of something could lead to at least outcomes that are unacceptable to you know this project and the ethos we have of doing things the right way and having very high quality standards. So... That's not going to happen going forward. Uh, so anything that we make a commitment to with the Zen Blockchain Foundation is going to be extremely high quality. And you know what that means is that we're going to be very cautious about what we commit to. Uh, but for sure, our wallets and when we commit to wallet wallets and other products going forward, 
we're going to make sure that they are released with extensive testing, released with you know uh, great code reviews, make sure the architecture makes sense and so forth. So this is our commitment, and you're seeing it now with the next Sphere release. It's only going to get better. Um, so really happy with that. Awesome job to the team for making that happen and for our community, especially the Zen Vangelis out there for doing the heavy testing. Um, okay, so the question that, that I keep getting, and this is a little bit of a, an, another topic here is, uh, okay, the price of Zen is up. We all know that. So how are our finances doing? Because things were getting a little hairy during the, the dark days of you know the bear market. So when Zen was at $3, for instance, our treasury revenues were terrible. I mean, just relatively, relatively speaking, right? We program, uh, we have a strategy, a roadmap, we program resources to accomplish that roadmap. Uh, and when we get hit on a revenue, which is the price of Zen currently, uh, you know, it, it takes a toll. So we, we did streamline things. We, we made cuts. The team here, I have to say, has been the, the best team that I've ever worked with personally. I've worked in, you know, from the military to many companies and I've never seen uh, employees or team members uh, take voluntary pay cuts or cuts in their hours or just not being paid but continuing to work. I've never seen that in my life. The fact that we've seen that here is a huge testament to what we're doing and how this goes well beyond a business. So it, it's really humbling to be part of that. Um, okay, that said, now our finances are doing much better. So in the sh- our short-term cash position has significantly improved. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, what we're doing is we're paying down debts that were incurred during the crisis. So we, we, you know, have we were lucky to have some organizations uh, continue to do work at risk, and now we have to make sure that they're compensated for work that was done. Right? So we just need to kind of clean up our finances, and everything is completely on track to making that happen. Now the 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 finance or budget, you know, think about this is a two dimensional space time on the horizontal axis, and you've got two functions. <laughs> Uh, and it's really the, the area in between the functions that count. So what, what matters is Zen staying up for a prolonged period of time, not just Zen going up, right? Because we're not sitting on a huge reserve of Zen that we just dump whenever the price of Zen goes up. That's just not how we operate. We get Zen with every block that's mined and we have, you know, this just in time budgeting process. Um, you know, and th- there are some benefits and, you know, pros and cons to that. That's just the way we do business. So we need to keep Zen up. Uh, in order for a prolonged period of time in order to really, really make sure that our finances are uh, squared away. But we are playing it very conservative with our funds. Um, We're very cautious to add new spending. Uh, That said, we've implemented an internal budget control process uh, that Rowan uh, and Michelle have pioneered and or, or implemented, I should say. And what happens is our budget now is controlled at the director level. So directors in functional areas determine how they want to execute towards our strategy. So they have budget to execute to our strategy. And what they've been working on right now or thus far is a budget from the crisis days. We haven't increased a program budget uh, since actually the lowest point of Zen. Now, that's good because we're using the excess funds to really just get the, the foundation's finances you know, in a very healthy position. Ultimately, we want to build up reserves if possible, right? And, you know, then as we are you know, improving our, our positions, we're going to consider new spending. Now, we do have a priority list of projects, and really we're talking relatively low dollar value projects, but things that we are going to start layering back into the budget so that the uh, directors will be able to, you know, increase their budget to execute towards our strategic priorities and our roadmap for 2020. So everything's on track for that. Just wanted to give a quick budget update because I, I keep getting this question, uh, especially as Zen has been doing relatively well in the marketplace. You know, we've been outpacing uh, the rest of the market you know, basically uh, for the last few months. So it's been great, but you know we, we want to still be conservative. Just our ethos is very conservative, and we don't want to go in any um, you know go out and uh, you know too much risk. Okay, so the last thing I'll say here is while I'm in Milan, what are the priorities? And, and Rosario mentioned we, we've got beta being released for the, the current sidechain model. This is a really big deal, right? This is where we, we basically complete the circuit. So in the alpha, you were able to commit testnet Zen into a test sidechain. Now with beta, you're going to be able to get that Zen back out of the test sidechain um, and it will actually have a, a working consensus in the sidechain. So it's a really big deal. It's Ouroboros Prowse modified by the team to work as a Horizon sidechain. 
So we're extremely excited for it. And we're on track for the release this next month. And I just want to be here for it. It's a really big deal for the project. And, you know, very excited for it. A huge culmination of work to finally hit maturity. Um, then the other big thing is we have to figure out what's going to be our first production side chain that we want to start building. Now, uh, we, we have a couple of paths or we, we have many paths that we can choose from. But um, what, what's going to be the first product that we want to release to really showcase the sidechain technology? What do we want it to do? We've got a bunch of different options, and now is the time to really start thinking. Um, you know, because we do things, you know, we we don't have the capacity to do many things in parallel. We need to choose uh, a very good product, a sidechain product, to really make that our focal point over this coming year to, you know, number one, showcase the tech and what it can do because we want other developers to come in and start building their own side chains. But number two, significantly extend this ecosystem to make it useful. All right. So right now, the way I look at our products is we have wallet products, we have a cryptocurrency product, Zen. Now, how do we make all of this stuff useful? So that's where I'm thinking with um, where we're going with this brainstorming on what side chain to focus on. So anyway, th- those are the big things that uh, are on my mind right now where we are as a project and I will open it up to questions. Yeah. So the first uh, question is what is the rough timeline for PM mobile? Oh, the, I'm sorry. Was that the, the timeline for getting mobile to market for sphere mobile? Yes. Sphere mobile release. Yeah. So we, and, and you know, uh, someone please jump in here if I'm, uh, if I'm speaking out of turn here, but, uh, honestly, we haven't um, we haven't programmed that in yet in terms of a specific timeline. So what we're doing now that we're we're taking Sphere in house is we started with desktop and then we're going to turn our attention to mobile. And once we you know get get the the desktop release and we figure out our path forward with mobile, in particular because we're actually hiring a couple of other developers to work on that. So uh, we're not making a, a firm commitment yet until we actually get that team in place. Sorry about that. Wish I had a better answer. Thank you, Rob. Uh, so the second question is, any any future conference participations planned? Uh, I think I can answer this one. So we have an upcoming one, Blockchain U, uh, UA 2020. So that's a really big one. Uh, that's in March 20th in Ukraine, in Kiev. And Rob is one of the speakers. Uh, so if you're, uh, if you're around the area, you know, please do reach out. Um, we also... Uh, evaluating other conferences that we will potentially attend, uh, include, including the, uh, uh, the Zero Knowledge Summit, for instance, in Germany, uh, also Li- uh, Liberty Con in BC. So overall, we are, uh, we are still very uh, uh, judicious uh, in evaluation process for conferences, uh, as they're you know, usually very costly, like Rob just mentioned about the uh, financial situation, while we are being sensible uh, with our budget spending and make sure that we only use our resources in a place uh, most needed and also uh, that would give us the, uh, the highest ROI. Uh, so we will announce once we uh, confirm our participation in future uh, future conferences. And hey, I'll throw a teaser out there for anyone who can make it to Blockchain UA in, in Kiev is Alberto will be giving a joint presentation with um, the Team Veritas from IOHK about Zendu. So if you want to see that technical in-depth look at, at the new protocol, uh, that's the place to do it. There you go. I wish I could be there. Um, so the last question is, uh, what is, okay, oh, sorry, I was looking at things. So what features will we get with regards to sidechains? We got a lot of questions about Sophia. People are excited about that. Did you say what features? Yes. With sidechains? Yeah. Uh, with what features will Sphere get with regarding to sidechain? That's a great question. Uh, let me see. Who's the best person to answer that? Al- Alberto, um, do you want to take a stab at that on how you're thinking about modifying Sphere for the sidechain ecosystem? Oh, sure, Rob. Um, Okay, uh, in, in reality, we are uh, already um, modifying Sphere to introduce uh, session functionality. So we are currently working on uh, um, creating the possibility in Sphere to bootstrap a new session. This means 
by posting a transaction in Mainchain that declares a new sidechain. And uh, let me say, allows to also declare the verification key associated to it and um, the custom fields that are, will be used for that specific sidechain. And moreover, uh, define, the, um, um, let me say, the additional data that should be included within the certificate to validate the proof. Moreover, uh, I mean, beyond the sidechain creation, there would be also um, um, forward transfer. So you will be able from Sphere to send coins uh, from mainchain to sidechain. And uh, um, for example, one of the functions that we are looking at, and um, let me say bookmark or mark as preferred some of the sidechain that you follow, and uh, um, being able to also uh, Obviously, receive back from uh, from sidechain some coins and see your balance updated in Sphere. Uh, but this is a, um, a first step. Um, the next step will be uh, allowing the extension of Sphere to be, uh, let me see, uh, extend in terms of functionality for specific sidechain. So, what does this mean? This means having the possibility for a sidechain user uh, to interact with the sidechain, I mean, uh, using Sphere. That can be, uh, for example, exchanging coins, but not all. I mean, there can be a specific transaction in a specific sidechain that would be uh, managed uh, using Sphere. And so the sidechain developer uh, maybe uh, would want to uh, extend sphere to make it more usable and from a user perspective and so uh, for this um, in, in for going in this direction we are um, also looking at let me say structuring uh, the current implementation of sphere to be more easily uh, extensible extendable uh, for the site and that's almost everything I have to say Thank you, Alberto. So these are the top three questions of the day. Uh, there are more questions that we don't have time to answer in this live questions and answer them in a uh, weekly side of chat channel here on Discord. Thank you, guys. Uh, back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And have a great day. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.